All right, we are back to paint. And by now we've spent quite a bit of time setting up this paint application. And right now we are ready to program it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the pencil sprite and I'm going to program it first. So go ahead and click on the pencil sprite and select it if you don't have so already. Then I'm going to go to the events section and I'm going to drag this very familiar when flag click block. I'm going to zoom this in so that the code is extra clear. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make this pencil forever follow my mouse on the stage. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to the control section, the orange one, and I'm going to bring this forever block. And I'm going to go to motion, the blue section, and I'm going to bring this go to block and I'm going to select mouse pointer. So this is the entire code that we need to make this sprite forever follow our mouse. So when I click the green flag, you see that the pencil always follows my mouse, which is pretty cool. Now, if you notice, this pencil always follows wherever my mouse is, but we would not like the pencil to follow my mouse if the mouse pointer is in the menu section right over here because it interferes with our buttons. So we need to add a condition so that the pencil would not follow my mouse if the mouse is down in this blue section over here. So what we need to do is add an if statement. So I'm going to go to control again and I'm going to add an if block. And I'm going to wrap the go to mouse pointer like so. And inside the condition, I'm going to go to operators, the green section, and I'm going to bring in the greater than operator. And in the first space, I'm going to go to sensing the light blue one. And I'm going to bring in this rounded mouse Y. So you know about coordinates, right? The Y coordinate is the vertical coordinate of the mouse in this case. So the mouse vertical coordinate needs to be greater than probably this coordinate right over here. So negative 100 or something like that. So if mouse Y is greater than or it's upper than negative 100, which is the boundary of this blue section over here, then the pencil will follow my mouse. Otherwise, it will not follow my mouse. It won't do anything. So if I hit the flag again, see the pencil follows my mouse. But if I bring the mouse down towards the blue section, notice that the pencil stopped following me. And if I bring the mouse back up, the pencil follows me again. All right, so this is pretty cool. With just a little bit of code, we've programmed the pencil sprites to either follow us or stop following us if we're in the right area of the stage. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is actually make this pencil act like a pencil. So I'm going to add pen features to Scratch. So go here on the bottom left part of the screen to add the pen extension for Scratch. So click on that button and click on pen. So notice that we suddenly have a new section here with new green blocks here that we can add to our code. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this last set pen size right below when flag clicked. I'm going to set the pen size to three so that we can notice something on the stage. And then I'm going to bring in this set pen color to a given color. And then I'm going to click the circle inside of it. And I'm going to drag the third slider all the way to the left to make the color black. All right. So I'm setting the color to black and the pen size to three. Now, in order to actually make the sprite draw something on screen, we need this block pen down. And to stop the sprite from drawing, we need this block pen up. We need this pen down block to be active when we click the mouse button and pen up to be active in any other case. So we need an if else block from the control section. So I'm going to click on control and then bring in the if else block. So if the mouse button is down, which we will get from the sensing section, the light blue one, and bring in this diamond shaped mouse down. So if the mouse is down, then we also need the pen of the sprite to be down, which will leave some marks on the stage. Otherwise, the sprite will not draw anything. 
So bring this if else block inside the other if block below go to mouse pointer. All right, so something like this. Then feel free to hit on the green flag to see what we've done. So the pencil follows me, but if I hit and drag the mouse button, notice that the pen actually leaves a mark on the stage. So we've made the pen already draw something on the screen. This is awesome. But notice something. If I stop the application and start it again, notice that this mark is clearly still visible on the stage. We'd like the stage or the canvas, the white canvas, which occupies most of the stage to reset to white. So we need all the marks to be erased, which means that I'm going to go to the pen section and I'm going to bring this very first erase all right below when flag clicked. So that when we start the application again, all the marks that we left in the previous drawing will be deleted. All right, so like this. All right, so we have a drawing pencil. Now, the next step is going to be making the pen change its color when we click on one of these colored buttons. So I'm going to click on this red button. I'm going to zoom in on the code a little bit. And I'm going to go to the events section and I'm going to drag this when this sprite click block. So when this sprite is clicked, we want the pencil to change its color to red. So I'm going to go to the pen section and I'm going to drag this set pen color to, and now I'm going to click inside this color space and I'm going to pick this eyedropper icon, which will let me select a color from the stage that I want. So I'm going to click on the red zone of the red button which will automatically select the right red color to choose. So let's see the effect of that. So I'm going to hit the green flag. I'm going to draw something on the screen. And now I'm going to click on this red button and I'm expecting the pencil to draw red. But unfortunately, the pen still draws black. Let's understand why. I'm going to drag some additional blocks. I'm going to set the pen size to 10 and I'm going to do a pen down and a pen up. So leave a single mark on the screen. Now, if I hit the flag again, the pencil draws black. After I click on the red button, the pencil still draws black, but notice what's happening. If I drag the red button away, notice that it left a mark here on the stage. The reason is that every sprite has its own pen. So the pencil has its own pen, which draws black. And in particular, this red button has its own pen, which has just left a red mark on the screen because we programmed it to do that. So we've set the pen color to red. We've set pen size to 10, which means a pretty thick mark. And then we've left a single mark with pen down and pen up. But this is not exactly what we want. We want to tell the pencil to set its pen to the red color. So we're going to learn something new in this video, and that is broadcasting and receiving messages in between sprites. So let's fix the layout of this red button by setting its X coordinate back to negative 150 and negative 120. Okay. And let's remove all this green code and let's discuss broadcasting and receiving messages. So sprites have the capability of broadcasting, shouting messages to all the other sprites. When a sprite shouts a message, all the other sprites can be programmed to listen and react to that message. Let me show you. So if I go to the event section, the yellow one, and if I bring this broadcast message one block right below when the sprite click, and if I click the drop down and select new message, I can create a new message that the pencil may receive and react to. I'm going to name this message red. So when the red button is clicked, this message that we called red will be sent to all the other sprites and we can program each and every one of them to react when they receive this message. So I'm going to go to the pencil sprite and I'm going to drag this starter when I receive the red message. So let me go to the looks section first 
and I'm just going to bring this say block and I'm going to insert I received red. Just for you guys to notice how the pencil sprite reacts. So I'm gonna stop and start the application again. And if I click on the red button, notice what's happening. Click. So notice the sprite has received red and it's saying this message on the stage. Now, instead of saying I received red on the stage, I'm going to drag this back and I'm going to insert a block from the pen section, set pen color to. And I'm going to click on the circle inside and I'm going to click the eyedropper and select the color red. If I stop and start the application again, notice I'm drawing black on the screen. And if I click on the red button, the pencil starts drawing red. All right, so this was a cool lesson. You learned about following the mouse and you learned about the messages that sprites can send and receive. Until the next video, I invite you as an exercise to do what I did for the red button to all the other colored buttons on the stage. So as a recap, what I did for the red button was that when the sprite was clicked, I broadcast a new message and the pencil sprite reacted to that message by saying when I receive that particular message, it set the pen color to the appropriate color of the button. So as an exercise, I'm going to invite you to do the same for orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. Of course, I'm going to do them in the next video, but I'm going to challenge you to do them as an exercise. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.